So what I want to do is make a compartment back here in this area for all the wiring and stuff. That's where the DC-DC converter will be and all the relays and wires and all that kind of stuff. So um, that I want the compartment to fit in this area pretty well. So what I did was I measured you know, just the profile here and then 3D printed this you know, little piece because then what I can do, I need to actually make it so that it goes around the shock. What I kind of did was just take a Sharpie like this, put it up against the shock and then trace out this path as I go around the shock because that will give me basically the projection of that shock on that profile. So then, I'll, well, what I'll do is I'll cut that out, then I'll trace it again on the piece of paper, scan the paper, and then import it into Fusion 360, and I'll have this profile. All right, here's the piece uh, after I removed it from the bike, and now that I have this contour, so I have some sheet metal cutting shears, All right, just like that. Maybe I can kind of clean it up just a little with a Dremel so that it's more fine, but it really doesn't matter. And now all I'll have to do is just trace it. So there you go, just like that. And here I brought the image into Fusion 360. Then I'm just tracing it with a spline and extruding it to make the final form of the box. So here is my wiring box. I printed a couple of prototypes for this, just trying to get all the holes in the right place and the dimensions right. And it is a little bit tight in here. I was hoping I would have more space, but I think I might print a little bit of a deeper one because I wanna put another junction box for grounds back here. Here is the wiring box mocked up inside the frame. And it just it's like that. There'll be a cover that goes on top of it and then the seat will go above that. It's held on using these little brackets that I welded to the frame. And I'm also using this mount point here that was originally for the frame. And then you can see I have it cut out to sort of fit the contour of the, the shock here and actually made sure that as the bike runs and the shock compresses that it wouldn't uh, uh, interfere with the box. So now I'm just making the cover for the box and also adjusting the depth a little bit. Then I'm placing the Gaius Garage logo on the cover and at first it was just for the hell of it but then I used the logo as an intake vent together with a fan for cooling. Here's the final version of the box. This one is a little bit deeper and this is printed from PETG. So it has a slightly higher melting point. So it shouldn't deform or you know melt with high temperature. So here it is. Um, I think it looks pretty good. The print came out okay. I don't really have as good results printing PETG. It's a little bit more finicky and I, don't really put too much effort into tuning my 3D printer because that's a whole can of worms. But I think it came out pretty well. It has these points to, I have a cover also. Printed a cover with the Gaius Garage logo. Figured why not take that opportunity. And this closes up just like that. You have the, these will be screws that will just go in here and close it up. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't really design some way to take this off so you know, for now I can just pop it out but later I'll have to like pry it out or something. Uh, I cut all of the holes for all the mounting points. This is the step down converter and it's mounted like this on this side and then I have mounting points for all of the accessories and also mounting points for the box to the bike and one thing I had to do on the outside is to create these chamfer holes because these 
in the, these places, this would be flush with the brackets on the frame where it would mount. So I needed the screws to be flush against the surface so it wouldn't press up against those mounting points, uh, but not back here. And then out of, on the bottom as well. And here is the box with all of the components placed inside. So I have the DC DC converter here. This is the step down converter that bring, converts 100 volts down to 12 volts. This is the solid state relay with a heat sink. Since all of the 12 volt electronics will be passing through this relay, this large heat sink should keep it cool. And of course there is the fuse box. That's the battery box. I have this grommet here with all the wires coming out. These little bolts, what I did, I epoxied them to the other side because if you look down there, this bolt is gonna be connecting to one of the mounts on the frame. But since it's behind the heat sink, I would have to secure it in order to secure this bolt. So it would twist freely. So I actually epoxied it to the side. And same goes for this bolt here. I have it epoxy to this side because I would be able to reach down there and hold it while I tighten the nut on the outside. So hopefully that will give me enough. But other than that, the mount points are back here and I have one there and there to actually secure it into the frame. Here is the basic function of the box. So I have this switch. This represents the key switch on the bike and the positive and negative leads are connected to the high voltage source. So right now there is no voltage at the fuse box, the 12 volt fuse box. And if I flip the switch that activates the solid state relay and the DC DC converter. And here I have 12 volts at the fuse connections. Here's the wiring box with the 12 volt accessory wires attached to the fuse box. And those are running underneath the heat sink and then coming out of this gland, this waterproof gland. So I made another addition to the wiring box by adding a 12 volt to five volt DC DC converter. So I'm using one of the fuses, the fuse connections for that buck converter and that's giving me five volts out of this wire wiring box as well so that's running on the yellow wire so in addition to four no five 12 volt lines I'll also have a five volt line that I can use for maybe like a USB port or something like that figure it'd be nice to add the option and also I'm going to use because you know this wiring box now is pretty crowded it's gonna be sitting under the seat and a lot of these components do radiate a good amount of heat. Like I know this DC-DC converter gets pretty warm and of course this solid state relay has a heat sink but the heat has to have somewhere to dissipate. So what I did was first of all, I reprinted the cover with some vents using the uh, Gaius Garage logo. So I figured I'd reuse those I also added this little piece to actually be able to pry the top uh, the cover out. So what I'm gonna do as well is I just bought like a little five volt fan that I'm gonna put in this location. Hopefully it'll fit because now it's pretty tight, but I'll use this five volt fan in addition to this vent to basically pull air in through the cover and then radiate it out of the back. And I'm also gonna put some like air conditioning foam to prevent uh, dust and maybe even to whatever degree um, moisture or water from being sucked in here. I think it should be okay, hopefully. Uh, but that's the idea. The fans are coming in tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so now I made another and hopefully final addition to my wiring power converter box. Uh, previously, I had the power coming out of here, the input power, high voltage, to be converted down to 12 volts, it would come out of this gland. And while that was fine, I was gonna put Anderson connectors on it. It was a little bulky, you know, I had a lot of wires coming out of here. And what happened was I found these, um, these are XT60EW connectors, and they, they're meant for drones. And they kind of like, obviously you mount them using these bolts and they connect flush. So I thought that would be a really cool addition to this box, I found a place for it. So what I did was 
I uh, routed the input power to this connector. So that's gonna be going to, this will be going to the uh, solid state relay. And then this is the ground. And then what I did was cut a hole for this XT60 EW connector, mounted it with some M2.5 bolts like that. And you know, there it is coming out of the back. So my input will be connected with this XT60 connector, my power input. And then this gland will have all of the power outputs. So the 12 volt, the five volt, and the switching outputs for the key switch and the controller on switch. So my output comes out of here, my input goes in here. And I think that's a, actually a really nice solution. It'll also be very easy. I kind of actually strategically chose this connection because it'll be a nice place, easy place for this connect when this is mounted inside the bike. So all I need to do is put the solid state relay back in, then close this thing up and we should be ready to go. All right, so here it is with the solid state relay back in place. There's the relay and the XT60 power input is down there, tucked away, nice and tidy. Everything else is pretty much the same. And now the output is no, I just have these two, I'll just have these two leads. This is all the switching and this is all of the power output. And then you have the input back there. Then of course, here's the cover. Uh, it has the filter foam. And that would just go like that. And of course, this would be kind of like an air intake. And I've got my little fan back here. And here is the wiring power converter box finally completed. I got everything closed up, put the connectors here. This connector has all my 12 volt output lines and this is a five volt line. This is the key switch to turn the, the power conversion on and off. And this is a high voltage on off switch for the controller. So this outputs high voltage when the key switch is on. And of course my input is here on this XT60 port. And then I have my cooling fan back here. And this vent has some foam to filter the air. Next we'll do a quick test of the power conversion box. Here I have my high voltage battery and that's connected to the input here using this XT60 cable that I made for something else previously. This is going to my ground and of course this is the, the positive lead. So let's turn that on. I don't know if you can hear it but the fan is running even though it's flush against the table. And then this is my switch. I have it shorted closed, so everything should be working. Now these two prongs on this connector, um, the one on the left is 12 volts, and then the one on the right should be the yellow wire, which is five volts. So let's just test that quickly. So, there we have 12 volts. And this connector gives us five volts. Additionally, the high voltage switch line gives us 94 volts, which is the battery voltage. And here is the power conversion box, as I'm now calling it, finally mocked up inside the frame in its completed state. The wires and connectors come into this area and 
I'm thinking I might put some sort of divider between the contactor and sort of the upper portion of this area where the wire, wiring will go. So that way these wires can sit on top of that and I'll have something to separate the two compartments. So it sits just like that. And then the cover just pops right on. Then I have my cooling fan back here. And of course the input is down here. So this will be the positive line to the input. It would just plug in like that and then I'll have a negative line that I need to make. And then my output will be here.